I'm here with Mark Ventura from Optitune. Mark, uh, what application are we looking here at? Uh, could you explain us this demo of the Optitune liquid lens and how the demo is set up? Love to, yes. Um, so one common thing is inspection of electronics, for example. So here we have electronics with different heights of parts. And we compare now uh, the standard 35 millimeter fixed focal length lens from Kova with a specifically modified Kova lens, which has the Optitune liquid lens inside on the right. Okay, so uh, on the left side, obviously the fixed focus lens, we, we can use the manual focus dial uh, to change the focus. Um, and now the thing about the liquid lens is we can do this electrically. For example, I can use a slider to just go, you know, focus up and down uh, with the computer. Or we can use autofocus routines, which are very quick to actually just uh, perform an autofocus at different levels. And um, I think that's more convenient than actually having to touch the optics. And regarding the autofocus, do you have to set that up before or it works uh, automatically? Um, well, you can, you can set good parameters. Um, we choose, for example, from where to where to focus, how many steps to make. You can actually see here um, in the first sweep, we take some large steps and then in the second sweep, some finer steps um, fit a curve through that, find its maximum and there it's focused. So this is software we've programmed. Um, I think it's not rocket science, but it's actually nice now to have a very stable uh, focusing and um, you can usually set it up that the time to focus is in the order of half a second. And how is the liquid lens uh, controlled actually? So the liquid lens is current controlled. When you increase the current, you push a coil down onto the lens. Actually, what I can show is a bit of a larger demo here. Um, when we press down, this is how the lens is actually shaped. Okay, so what we need is a, is a pushing down motion. And in an electrically tunable lens, this is done with a, a voice coil actuator. The more current goes through the voice coil, the more it will push down, the more the lens will flex. And that's essentially what we're doing when we're moving around uh, the focus here. Is there also the possibility to control the liquid lens uh, through the camera? Yeah, that's actually a very good point. Uh, indeed, up to now it's been mainly external drivers, um, but the good news is now we've been able to shrink the controller size. So actually there's um, a model that fits inside this little connector here. Um, so within the liquid lens you can have also its controller and the idea is really that um, the lens can be connected to the camera and be controlled through the camera's SDK. Could you give us some other examples of applications for the Optitune liquid lens? Absolutely, and there's plenty of them. Having um, a large depth of field is actually quite interesting, um, especially if you're looking through, for example, transparent uh, materials, liquids, glass. Uh, in this case here, we've stacked up um, a bunch of Petri dishes which have you know, different particles inside. Um, again, on, on the left side, you know, we have the, um, the manual focusing between different layers, right? Because uh, your depth of field would not cover everything. And uh, with the liquid lens, we can do this uh, with the autofocus. There's a bottom layer here, a central layer and a top layer. And uh, what you can actually do as well with the liquid lens is you can scan, you know, and take like stacks of images to give you a bit of an idea how that could look like. We're just turning on here a toggle mode where the lens actually just jumps now between the top and the bottom layer. But then uh, you can literally take a stack of images and you can find particles or you can detect, uh, you know, things on the surface, scratches, dust, for example. Um, and actually that's another application that we're using in-house. Um, we produce liquid lenses. They have two cover glasses on the top and on the bottom. And actually I have a setup here which uh, we use in-house that um, basically with a liquid lens I can also determine on which layer is the particle. So it means you are using this application for the manufacturing of your own lenses? Absolutely, yes. So the liquid lenses have a, a container glass, liquid, membrane, and then a top cover glass. And uh, we inspect for particles using dark field illumination. And um, because the distance between these glasses is so significant, you cannot get everything with one shot. 
Um, and with the liquid lens now what we can do is we can see here for example these small particles I know they're on the bottom container glass because if we now s switch the focus to the top layer I'll see different particles for example these bigger ones here so basically we use our liquid lens to scan through these optical components to detect particles on different layers. So in what other industry, for example, would this function be used? For the 35 millimeter lens specifically, we find that bottle inspection is very uh, nice application because you can, you can look into the neck of a bottle and uh, yeah, there's different sizes of bottles. So again, you know, with a focus on the bottom, you can inspect through the same machine that has a division system at the neck at different heights of bottles. Uh, usually it's more for plastic bottles, but we show in a glass bottle here. Mark, you said there are also medical applications the liquid lens could be used for? Um, yeah, for example, um, the inspection of liquids. So imagine you have to produce a very clean um, you know, a bottle or a liquid and um, it's actually not so easy to detect particles inside a liquid because you don't know where they are versus the depth of field. So what we can see here in this example is that there's, for example, particles which are now at the top of the uh, bottle and when I change focus I see other particles which are at the bottom. So what you can actually do is um, scan through that liquid and actually what can be done is you can you know, rotate them and make them move by machine and then you can actually just keep this uh, in focus and you'll see if, if particles are detected. So the Optitune liquid lens has to be combined with other fixed focal length lenses. Could you elaborate on the uh, possibilities of combination? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's two basic approaches. Um, some things work nicely off the shelf like, you know, S-mount, C-mount lenses where the liquid lens can be mounted either in the front or at the back. Um, but this is of course not fully ideal because uh, if you would design the liquid ends in at the right place you really get the best performance. So the nice thing about such customized designs is that the liquid lens can be placed closer to the aperture stop. So you usually get better performance, you get lower F numbers, better image quality. And uh, this is a nice example uh, what Kova has done with this 35mm lens. The liquid lens is actually right behind the aperture and that results in very nice image quality in this case also with the very compact lens we have here we get a one inch image circle for example um, this is because of the good job of the optical designer who integrated the liquid lens Optitune is 14 years old you have been uh, manufacturing liquid lenses since the beginning so how have you seen the market developing yeah it's been it's been growing tremendously um, you know, we had to learn a lot about liquid lenses and the more we learn, the better the lenses get in terms of, you know, features, aperture sizes, thermal stability, waveform quality, speed, everything has been improving. And um, yeah, the application spaces are growing, right? Um, I mean, we, we now talked about the 35 millimeter lens and its applications. If we look into more, for example, wide angle um, lenses we have a lot more things going on like package sorting in logistics you know bin picking um, these kind of things or if we go for higher magnification or telecentric lenses there's a lot more inspection tasks with uh, high mag shallow depth of field also microscopy uh, has become very popular um, portable microscopes that have to be you know lightweight fast focus um, so yeah we've really seen interesting um, applications pop up um, everywhere where the, either the, the object is not well positioned or where you need to have a large depth of field. Um, actually another trend for the 35mm lens fits in nicely uh, is in the NIR, is if you inspect uh, or look at iris recognition for example, um, or other body parts. So what is your outlook for the future development of the market for liquid lenses? Well, um, we still have a few lens models to develop, some maybe a bit smaller, some a bit larger. Um, but I think the, the main focus is now to get them nicely integrated into optical designs as this one here. And um, there's a lot of companies working on that. And especially what I'm keen on is to get this uh, interface to the camera world um, to make it more convenient, uh, you know, just to plug in a liquid lens as if it were a normal thing and uh, being able to do autofocus in the camera SDK. 
make it really easy to use for the end customer. And I'm sure we're gonna you know, move in that direction. Thank you.